my shit in the car, then I moved to Atlanta. Y'all thought it was sightseeing. Yes, I was stressed for the time being. Wake up, little nigga. Alright, let's get it. We record and we love, man. It's Grind Season TV. I'm here with a up and coming fire artist out of Saint Saint Fort Myers. I'm about to say Saint Myers, Fort Myers, Florida. You feel me? Dope artist, Zona 1K. Formerly used to go. You still go by Zona Boy, or or that's. Oh, oh yeah, I, I go by uh, I go by Zona One K now. You know, Zona Boy is the past. That's the past. Me, I'm on some new shit, man. You know what I mean? Nah, I, I respect it, and I feel like because I, I was going through your music and stuff. You know, doing my little bit of research, and then I seen you had two YouTube channels. So I'm like, ah, right, is it Zona Boy? Is it Zona One K? Or do you just rock with both from time to time? Right, right. Uh, I just I, I stick to Zona One K now. That's the uh, official name now. Right. No confusion. So uh, let's start from the beginning, man. Um, your upbringing. I don't know. You was born in Fort uh, Fort Myers. You was born in Haiti. Um, just give. give well, me yeah, a I was. I was born and raised in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Okay, born and raised in Fort. But Myers. my people. Yeah, but my people originate from Haiti, though. All right, makes sense. That makes sense. I understand that. Um, so coming from Fort, so being from Fort Myers with the Haitian background and stuff like that. What was it like growing up for you, man? What was a uh, was Fort? Cause people don't know about Fort Myers. They hear about Pompano. They hear about Miami, Orlando, Tampa. But for the, I kind of get caught. Like people don't really know about y'all. Y'all get caught up in the mix of all of the other places of Florida. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Um, growing up, uh, Haitian and Fort Myers was was kind of rough. Cause like we ain't really get the respect we used to get. Now, like now, we get hella respect. But back then, it was always, oh, Haitians eat cats and dogs. Uh, a lot of people kept trying to pick on us and fight us. But, you know, we never backed down. So we really showed, like, who we was as a uh, culture. And we proved ourselves. And now, you know, everybody fuck with disease, you feel me? But um, for Miles, is kind of like, kind of like a lot of them, but a little bit more smaller. You know what I'm saying? But we're making a, we're making a little name for ourselves now. Slowly, people are starting to know our city. Yeah, it makes sense. Um... Actually, let's elaborate on that part, though, a little bit more, because I remember even growing up when I was young, you feel me, in New York, I grew up in New York City, originally in the Bronx. Um, right. People, they used to be like, oh, they used to, like, clown on the Haitian culture or whatever and make jokes about Haitians, and it's like, right. I, know, I got Haitian homeboys, I'm actually, I don't know if you can see it right now, I'm wearing the Pray for Haiti, or well, a Haiti sweatshirt, this is a Pray from the Pray for Most Haiti. Most deaf. Much respect. Um, merch from Mad Comedy, I had, oh, if I got a Zoe on here, you know, I'm going to show up to Zoe with some love, you feel me? Um, right. But people used to, I don't know, people used to just try to clown the Haitians all the time, and it, it, it's just crazy that it's seen now, like, Kodak, Jack Boy, uh, not so much Wyclef, people didn't really, they, they respected Wyclef, but they didn't want to be like Wyclef, but the right. haters zones, y'all kind of, like, made it a thing where people respect y'all shit, and they just want to be down with y'all, everybody want to claim they're either Haitian now, back in the day, everybody wanted to be Jamaican. Right, 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 you know, but, you know, we fuck with Jamaicans, man, you know what I'm saying, it ain't really nothing to it, we are African, I don't understand why. Why our own car was hating on us. Like, we was the first ones to, you know, gain independence. Like, if anything, we supposed to be, like, working together. But, uh, you know, slowly we started to, like, slowly people are starting to, like, you know, know that and starting to gain knowledge. Not everybody's starting to be, like, the ignorant self they used to be. Some people starting to get woke to this shit. They starting to realize that we in battle with a whole nother person. We ain't not in battle with ourselves. You feel me? And, and salute, like, shit, Messing with your music, I know you was the smart dude, but even talking to you, knowing that you have that knowledge of history where you come from, it's dope. And it's funny because, right. uh, like I said, I'm from New York, feel me? But my, my people, my mom's is from Belize. So when right, right. with the Belize flag, sometimes when I be having it tied up, they thought it was a Haitian flag. I'm like, it do, it do resemble. <laughs> yeah, it's it similar, do resemble. Like, to my Haitian bros, but now nah, I'm not Haitian. Right. Right, but I fuck with this, so it's heavy, you feel me? Um, right, right. Moving forward, so being with that background, what kind of music was in your house? So what actually got you into this uh, space of hip hop that you in now? What? Well, realizing when I was in college in Tampa, you know, I was rapping like part time, you know, because I was doing school at the same time. But then some came up back back in hometown. So like once I seen hometown, like I ain't been to hometown in a minute, you know. So when I when I got back into hometown, like I just felt a, a energy, like a, a different energy, like me approaching music differently, uh seeing the struggle, you know what I'm saying? Like it really talked to me and like it showed me like to remember who I where, like where I came from basically. And I that's what happened. I, I kind of forgot where I came from and the setback opened my eyes to see 
you know, where I'm at now, you feel me? That's what made me, like, more hungry and, and, and started going harder. I respect that. So, and so you said you was in college. What school was this at the time? Um, I was attending probably. Uh, I, you can go ahead. My bad. No, nah, no, nah, you good. I'm good. I wanted to see what you was doing. I was attending uh, Hillsborough Community College okay. for, for like two years. Then some shit came up, some shit happened, and I had a bell. I, I understand. Listen, I did the JUCO shit too when I was uh, before. I went to the. I was at a four year, got kicked out, went to JUCO, still playing football, got kicked off the team, and then I just ended up finishing my four year degree after the fact. But that's how. Yeah, you just gotta keep going. Gotta yeah, just gotta keep going. going. Uh, was it, was rap always plan A for you? Did you ever have a plan B, or was it was just you know you was always gonna be an artist, but you was just was like going to college to get other information that artists don't get on the artist side? Rapping always been plan A to me, and I believe that's the reason why I am where I am now. I, I'm getting more recognition. It's because I've been I've been rapping for years now. Like I've been taking risks. I've been just doing a lot of stuff for this rap thing, but like you know, it's it doesn't change my like. I always do got a plan B. I do got a plan B, but I feel like rapping always gonna be plan A because if you're gonna make it plan A, you gotta make it happen. You know, you can't doubt yourself. You gotta just make it happen. You feel me? Absolutely. It should, it, should, it should always be your plan A. You should never like second guess yourself. If it's gonna be your plan A, then step like it's gonna be your plan A. You feel me? Exactly. So it's as simple as that. People, a lot of people with dreams, it don't happen because they give up on them. They just quit trying. Right. Right. And we all, we all go through it. We all go through it. Exactly. Um. So we we, we start. We at the we was at the beginning. He was he was born and raised Fort Myers. You've been rapping since how long? How when you first started rapping? I started rapping uh when I graduated high school. Oh, so you ain't even been rapping that long. Not really, like, <laughs> I wanted to, like, when I was a kid, my brother told me he was going to put me in the studio, but, you know, that never came up, so I wrote my first little, like, first as a kid, like, maybe, like, 12, but then, like, I just gave up on it, because, you know, I ain't had no funds for it, you feel me? Yeah. So, once I got, like, a job, you know what I'm saying, and, like, I'm getting around people who rap. And they showing me the ropes, and I'm sitting back and peeping, like, okay, this is how they do this, this is how they record, you know what I'm saying? I'm watching and observing how people, how they how they record in the studio, how they just come up and freestyle. I'm observing all these things. And I was telling myself, like, man, I did want to become a rapper back in the days, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I should probably start it, you know what I mean? You know, just some start something, see if I could do it. And in the beginning, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, man. Writing that first song was difficult. <laughs> Nah, absolutely. It's, it's I, I understand. Like I said, I, back in the day, I used to play around and rap. My, I have a brother that's an artist that actually rap for real and stuff like that. But I, I am a lot of my families did it. I played the round, but that studio gene is something different. And, yeah. And also, like, I'm pretty sure you hanging out with your rap friends as a person who wanted to rap when you was 12. And you like, dang, y'all guys got the studio at y'all disposal. Y'all be coming in here playing. If I had that studio time, I'd be doing this, this, and this. Facts, facts, man. Niggas wasn't even dropping like fire song. They just let that shit go to waste. Like it would just, it, it would eat me. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I hear a song I fuck with, my homie will never drop. Like come on, bro. <laughs> what you doing? Like what you doing this for? You feel me? What you doing this for? You just playing? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, you you said you started around twelve, kind of deferred to you about like, you graduated high school. Who was your influences and in the music that you was creating? Like, what artists influenced you to do the music, or would you say influence your style of how you make music? Because you got a lot of different flows, cadences, and even melodies as well. Most definitely, I'm a, I'm gonna say uh, Lil Wayne, uh, Future, uh, a little bit of Drake. You know, with the little soft. A little soft, you know, soft, like you know how he harmonizes with. Like he don't really sing, but he can sing. You know, you gotta, you gotta peep that. Not a lot of people can't sing, but they can harmonize. Like, they can like make it sound like yeah, something. No, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. Sound, basically that, and that's exactly what I learned from him is how to carry a note and how to hit the right note too. You don't want to just say, "Yeah, I want that." You gotta redo it. Sometimes you gotta keep redoing it till you get it right. That's what I learned about him, and I learned about him is. When he got into the game, he learned more and more things. He took singing lessons, you feel me, to, to better his career. You feel me? That's what a lot of artists don't really do, though. Some artists do, though. Yeah, it's, 
some of them just get there and they like, well, I'm nice. People like me for this, but it's like you don't you don't have longevity in just doing one thing. You got to concentrate right. on yourself. Exactly, and that's that's what I learned about Drake is he switches his flow a lot. He he's not a boring rapper. Exactly, I, I don't disagree with you on that at all. And so, and the one thing I've noticed, the Drake thing actually is perfect that you bring that up. Because, like, everybody uses auto-tune in their music to some extent, right? But even in your music, the way that you use right. auto-tune, I know that you're not using it, relying on it that heavy, because those notes that you use in your songs, I know you can hit those live. Right. A lot of people use notes that they use in the auto-tune, but they, if they do a live, it will sound terrible. Right. A lot of good songs get ruined by auto-tune, too. <laughs> Sad exactly. to say. Exactly, exactly. So, um, Free My Grandma, that was the first thing for you. <laughs> yeah. Feel me? Hell yeah, free, man. Free my grandma, man. What was it? What, what, that's what was the mindset when doing that, and how was you like? Yo, how did you feel when you seen people actually react to it very positively? And I know you've come a long way since free grandma, free my grandma. Well, see, with me doing that project, I was really just trying to be different, you know, in my city. Cause you know, in my city, they all they all, they all rap about the same thing. It's always the same thing, the same thing. And like, you know, growing up, I always was told to be different. Yeah. So I'm like, if you be different, you know, you'll get noticed. You get noticed when you're different. So, free my grandma. Just I heard the beat. It sounded like a sad beat. And I was thinking, like, dang, let me think of something, like, catchy. Like, I can catch somebody's eye. And then, like, once I came up with the idea, my grandma ain't really into it. I ain't never meet my yeah, grandma. Yeah, see, that was my thing, so I wanted <laughs> yeah. to know if your grandma I was really I, I ain't never, listen, I, I, I just did that <laughs> shit. But, you know, I just did that shit just to do it. I ain't give a yeah. crap. But I ain't never really get, get to meet my grandma. But I just said free my Sorry, grandma because, yeah. you know, this shit's crazy. Cause I heard about it was a little grandma article. She she had a trap house, you know, and she she got arrested. So I used her, <laughs> I used her basically. So now nah, this shit crazy. But once I dropped it, like you know, people people were showing love that I didn't know that I was gonna show love, and like it got it got me like you know a little bit, one foot in a little bit. You know, it made it shook it shook a lot of people. Like, still to this day, people still hit me up talking about free grand grand. I'm like, damn, they still know that song. Like, yeah. in a couple of years, man. Like, <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Yeah, you can tell when, you, think, when, right. I, when I hear the free, uh, free grand grand, and then when I hear your later music, like Ra Ra, you can see the growth in the music in just a short amount of time. Right. That's what so. people don't realize. Like, that, like it, 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 it shocks me because, like, the music I make, like, three months ago, be nothing to, com to compare to the music I I'm recording now. Like it's just, the growth, it just keeps going. I just gotta keep it coming. You feel me? Absolutely. So while we still on this on the music side of things, is there any artist that surprised you that liked your music that co-signed you? And is there any artist that you wanted to work with that you have yet to work with? Uh, let me see. I believe who hit me up? OG Booby Black. Okay. I don't know if you know him. Yeah, he hit me up. He showed me respect. He told me I was hard. I respect him. Let's see. A couple a couple local artists that's on the rise too. They see they see me coming up. They be saluting me and stuff. But uh any other artists really? Uh, other artists that be hitting me up, they be trying to scam me, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the big safe joint everybody been doing during the Yeah. Man, listen, they talking about oh buying a slide. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's crazy. A five hundred dollar slide. Like, man, yes, man, and I, I don't got, go bro, I don't got scammed already. I'm not like you know me. I'm a risk taker, so I'm gonna find out if it, like if things are scams or not. You know, it don't matter. It's just a lesson learned. It's not really an L. So I I done been there, done that. They be hitting me up, yo, you hard. I want you to be on my next mixtape. Blah, blah blah blah. Just need a small deposit of five hundred dollars. I cut that shit short. That shit like I don't even think they really talking to me. I feel like that's a bot. You feel me? So I can't really say how much artists really salute me, but OG Booby Black definitely saluted me. And any other artists I'll probably work with, I mean, right now, if if you know if if it comes to, if it comes down to it, and like we the universe puts us together into the studio, we like we make a song, then yeah, it is what it is. But I really right now I ain't really looking for no features because the industry really like 
No, you see, you see how the industry is. You know, niggas really acting weird. So I don't really want to hey, be. Man. I already know. homie with. <laughs> I don't want to be homies with these niggas. You I, feel I, me? I, I, yeah, but it's, it's still business at the end of the day. Though. But I'll like, still work. Yeah. If it's good business, still work do the business. Them. But I'm yeah. seeing even even friends fall out right now. I done seen the whole internet over the Jack Boy Kodak drink, and I'm like, man. Right, right, right. It's getting crazy, crazy, man. I don't. Homies. Oh, listen. I'm trying to escape from that. Why am I? Why am I worried about my homeboy who got money with me? You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't be worried about no shit like that. You know. I, we should be getting this money, living life. You know, we got out the hood. We're not supposed exactly. to be taking steps back. We taking steps back when we arguing, getting on the internet, causing a scene. Nah, I ain't with that. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, people, I, people, people was like, <laughs> you know, when you when you got people with, with money and power like that, it don't always be them two that might be do that do something, but it be the people around them because they want to be in the right, extra right, all the extra shit. Right, oh. bro. It's getting it's getting out of hand though. This shit is crazy. Um, so social media, social media has its parts, but as a rapper, you kind of got to deal with it. Seeing you constantly get posted on like uh, pages like Florida Up Next and other uh, Florida pages that cover up and coming hip hop artists, how does that make you feel, man? It makes me feel good because, like, you know, I'm getting recognition from. I'm getting recognition from like pages and then like it's it's building algorithm i'm getting random dms telling me oh yo this track is fire like you know i'm getting these every day so it's working you know like i feel good about myself like i feel like i'm i'm, I'm, I'm almost on my way there you know i feel like i'm already there how much they talk about me and stuff so like just gotta keep it going and keep stepping so they can keep posting me exactly um so this uh, this is a quote i wrote down so how, uh, my thing was how you don't get winded, right? Because like I said before, you have different cadences, different flows, different melodies that you use, and right. it'd be something that's like dark, like on that on a, like on a drill type joint. Then you got joints that's like more upbeat, and you can and like you could change your voice to make it sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit darker, depending on or lower, I should say, depending on the track that you got. What how did what taught you to master that kind of stuff from a person like you say you only been doing it for a few years consistently. A lot of people, a lot of people, like, growing up, people told me that I have a deep voice and I can make it get high. So I feel like I, I've been, I've been doing it, but I ain't know what used to put it in, you know? I could fake, I could fake voices, like, I could sound, like, high-pitched, I could sound low pitch. I can do all that. Like, I've been faking, I've been acting like, I can, like, impersonate other people's voices and stuff, so I'm good at that. So, I didn't know what use it was going to be good for, but then when I got into the studio, that's when it hit me. Right, because I'm like, whoa, answering the phone. Then I get up, and they're like, but then you, I'm thinking to myself, like, no, I was going to into it. When did, oh, who is when I was before I hit the studio, I just go straight like I'm, I'm as that from Lil, yeah, I got, I read an interview, so he doesn't get, I mean, he was listening to PA, <laughs> right. Um, way, uh, and I knew that me giving is gonna show him going. You know, I'm his father. To work hard, and then you, I wanna. Sh when I get to the see me, I'm gonna tell him this is it. it can't nice wrist, so. One thing I can say to fathers, if they're not, I'm not gonna speak for others, dads. So from my mom in the same house, take care of your seed. You don't gotta be, you don't receive. You don't get no blessings if you don't do right. So that's why I don't, I don't, I, I take at the same time, I ain't at the same time. So I have to make time for all. All I did was I, I had new wave element when I was on a boy man. I, I went to a shirt and my homies okay. shirt, you know, with the stuff be going first performance. You know, these people, were, yeah, when I like came on the stage, it felt like mosh because a mosh pit. Like, I was in that niggas, you crazy show like fire talking about, yeah, I fuck with Fort Myers. I mean, I fuck so I was people, people, cops. It just made me feel it made me feel. new visuals just coming soon a couple for the little hype to get I got for more hype just
Wake up, man. Uh.